Hallelujah. I've seen revival just break out at the oddest time. I've seen scheduled revival just break out and go. I've seen scheduled revival nosedive uh, uh, into a pond and, and just fizzle out. Amen. I, I've seen church services go for, for days and weeks on end where it seemed like that we were continually in a rut and never could get out. But I still believe in the potential. Amen. I still believe that there is hope for those uh, that feel like they are hopeless. Amen. Uh, I look at the potential. Sometimes people look at folks and I say, well, they're no good. They're worthless. Uh, oh, nobody even cares about them. Uh, but when I see somebody that seems uh, like they're hopeless, uh, like that, they, uh, that, 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 that nobody cares uh, and nobody wants them, God sees potential in them. Amen. God sees something inside of them. I will let somebody in the house that I know that it's time to get out. Amen. It's time for you to come out of the bondage that you're bound in. It's time for you to come out of the things that have you chained down. It's time for you to have your own exodus, if you please, and come on into the promised land that God has made for you. Hallelujah. I'm thankful tonight that there is a promised land. I know that we can be saved while here on earth. We can enjoy the presence of God while we live right here on earth. But one day there is going to be a promised land. Hallelujah. One day in New Jerusalem. One day that city of God. Heaven. Amen. Home of the righteous. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward one day to the great exodus. But until I get to that exodus, Just like there was a hindrance, like something had me wrapped up. And thank God for the exoduses that I've had in my walk with God. Oh, I believe it's time tonight for somebody to get out. I said, I believe it's time. If I can say it like this, in the name of Jesus, it's time to get out. I said, in the name of Jesus, it's time for you to rise and walk. In the name of Jesus, it's time. of people that were enslaved. Amen. It begins that way, but it ends by declaring how God came down in glory to dwell in the midst of a redeemed people. Did you get that? The book of Exodus starts uh, talking about a people that were bound and they were enslaved, uh, and there at the end it talks about how God's glory come down uh, in the middle of a people that had been redeemed. Uh, oh, have you been redeemed tonight? Uh, sweet as the song. Uh, Physical ailments, 
But sometimes I think that we doubt he can heal mental ailments. You know, there's some people that you can look at and everything looks just great. And their bondage, you'll never see. Their bondage, their mind is chained up. Their mind has been oppressed. And I'm going to tell you something. I know there's some people that will say things about mental illness. And they'll say, well, some people just need to get over it. Well, I can tell you, there is some things that people need to get over. I'm going to tell you something. Mental illness is real. Did you hear me? I said mental illness. I know this is something that's taboo in church nowadays, but mental illness is real. I have seen people. We, I, I have worked. We, I've lost good family members that were bound by mental illness, and they saw no other way out. I believe it's real, but I also believe that it's no match for the Savior. Hey, come on now, come on now. I, I, I know the world we live in. I know if you go down the road just a little ways to, to the rehab place, you'll meet with men that are bound by things that you can touch. They're bound by meth. They're bound by crack. They're bound by alcohol. They're bound by cigarettes. They're bound by tobacco. They're bound by those things, things you can put your head on. You can talk to them, and they'll tell you what their choice was. But you see, there's other rehab centers. Matter of fact, every city and town that I know of is, is full of a lot of rehab centers, uh, and most of them have a sign by the road uh, and a steeple on the church, amen? And, 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 and the people that are in those rehab centers, uh, many a times, you can't walk in and see what they're bound by, but a lot of times you go in just about anyone, any church you want to go in right now tonight, there's people in that church uh, that is bound by mental things uh, that they'll never tell anybody about. I don't know why I'm right here. This is not even what I've got. I don't know why the Lord's leaving me right here. I just feel like staying here just a minute and let somebody know uh, that I know that the mind is a big battlefield. Uh, it might be six inches uh, by six inches, uh, but it's the largest battlefield you'll ever fight on. Uh, I'm going to tell you something. There is a king of kings uh, and a lord of glory uh, that can conquer that six inch battlefield uh, and conquer that mind uh, and the mental things that you've got going on. Uh, he can deliver you. Uh, he can turn it around, friend, uh, if you'll just give your heart uh, to God. Uh, he said it right here, uh, chapter 8, verse 25. This is what he said. 
Pharaoh called for Moses for Aaron. He said, go ye, sacrifice to your God in the land. Stay right here. Stay right here. As long as the enemy can keep control on you, he'll still manipulate you. As long as he can keep you somehow under his thumb and under his finger, he'll manipulate you and he'll turn you in the way that he wants you to go. Come here, son. Come here, sorry. Come help me tonight, if you will. Hey, Amen. I thought about this as I was studying and praying this afternoon. There's been a lot of times of me and Sawyer will go to town, even though he's getting bigger. Sometimes you see how I got a hold of his collar like this. A lot of times if he's got a t-shirt on, it's not as easy. I'll just rest my head. But sometimes me and Sawyer like to get out. There's been times we got out and went to town, or we went to gun shows, or, or different places walking around. And a lot of times we get to walking, and usually he'll walk right in front of me, or he'll hold my hand. I don't mind if he's eight years old and still wants to hold daddy's hand. That don't bother me a bit. There's a bunch of folks in this land that wants to take this young man and defile him and take him away. You better believe I'm going to hold on. But a lot of times I get him like this. Because if we walk into the crowd, I'll do like this. Or I'll pull him back over like this. Sometimes I'll turn him around like this. I know it's kind of funny right now. But that's what happened. And sometimes when we're standing there, we'll stand still. And I'll put my arm around like this and we'll walk. He don't seem to mind it. I know he don't because he loves his daddy. You know what? I've got control over him. I'm going to tell you, the Lord wants to do somebody like this. The only problem is you letting the devil keep his hand on your neck. And the Lord's wanting to pull you this way and the devil's pulling you back this way. Sorry, son, I'm not trying to give you whiplash. But it seems that every time you try to do something for the Lord, the devil pulls you another way. You know what that is? That's bondage. Thank you, son. That's bondage. You say, well, I'm free. I'm doing what I want to. But, oh, there comes the devil. And he's going to pull it on me again. I feel like I'm free in my mind. I feel like everything's going great. Somebody's listening to me tonight. I said the devil will offer compromises. 
oh, you can still do this, this, and this. But you're going to do this much of it, and I'm just going to pull you back. I'm just going to rein you back in. Oh, that's compromise number two. You can get out of Egypt. Hey, Amen. That's what he said. 828, by your said, I will let you go. It's been sacrificed to your Lord God in the wilderness. Only you shall not go very far away and treat for me. Amen. Oh, <laughs> hallelujah. 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 Why do we allow the devil to dictate our lives? You say, oh, I never do that. Oh, but we do. Oh, but we do. We'll let him tell us things and bind our mind. And I won't let somebody know tonight. It's time to get out. It's time to get out. You've been in bondage for long enough. You've been chained for long enough. It's time to get set free. Free. Free, free, free. And who the Son set free, the Bible says, is free indeed. Amen. amen. Brother Roland, I picked you on you already. I've been picking on Nick here. And they made that amen just about a year, year and a half ago, or maybe just about a year ago, February. And he stood up right there where he said it at. We was talking about being free that night. And he stepped out into the aisle and he got to say it. I'm glad I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. And I've testified about this because I saw it that night when he was telling us, I'm free, I'm free. And all of a sudden it was just like it dawned on him. I really am free. Hallelujah. I really, I really did get free of the bondage. And so what happens is, is you may feel free and you may think you're free. But the thing is, as long as the devil's got you where he can pull you back in, you're not totally free. You're still tied down. You're still, you're still bound. But when you get absolutely and totally free, there's not a devil in hell can stop your worship. There's not a devil in